Thank you, Silvana. Ladies and gentlemen, dear sisters, I mean, I feel so warm at my heart when I see all these wonderful women coming from the whole world. And you know, when we are speaking about to advance the power making, be it in society, be it in politics, we always hear that women are not capable to do one thing and that is networking. Well, when I look in this room, I know we are capable of networking. And when this is the beginning of a worldwide network of women who give each other the hand, who help each other, then our societies will become better. Because it is very difficult when you have in business or in politics, just one token woman and all the rest men, then this woman has to adapt to the male environment. But if we are several, then we can do what we do in normal life to get the equilibrium in our society. And that is much needed. And it is most needed in all the environments where women are still absent. Now, I must tell you that the experience of Europe is one where in our Nordic countries, mainly, the um, perception of women are needed at all levels of society has advanced well. In Central and Southern Europe, only in those countries where quotas were established, be it in economics or be it in politics, things went better. And where things went better, that means where you had this equilibrium between men and women, because the secret is men and women together. It is not men here globally and women here globally. No, both together are the secret. And we made an analysis, not we. Our business world made the analysis. So all these feministic organizations like Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank and <laughs> Ernest and & Young and <laughs> McKinsey, um, they made the analysis to look at the business world. When you have a business led only by men and you compare the same business led by men and women, well, the second one makes a much better financial result which tells me women in business and women in politics is not about woman power. It is about economic, economic results. It is about political results. So women mean business and women mean a better society. Everybody has seen that. But then when you look at the facts and the figures, you see very well that this happens only when there is a will. And I must say, very often it is the men who help us to go ahead. Now, we have just heard the um, leader of Jamaica uh, tell us when she was called uh, by the former prime minister to become prime minister and how she managed to change her society. In the European government, the European Commission, there are 33% of women. Why? Why the male president of the commission wanted women commissioners. And he has not given to the women commissioners the so-called soft responsibilities. He has given them the strong ones. And that makes a change in the way policy is done. And then let me give you some figures which show you uh, what a long way we have to go because I am already uh, standing at the uh, figures of uh, Europe. Um, in our member states, in the 28 member states, the judges in our courts, 33%. That is a third. That's not bad. But then when you look at the most powerful court in Europe, the European Court of Justice, all of a sudden only 20%. And then when you look at the soft power, the uh, European Court of Human Rights, then at 38%. So you see that we women have really to take in hands where the real power goes. i give you another example. Uh, if you look at our banks, very
very few women in the governing bodies. When you look at the European Central Banks, who are led by how many women? One or, one or zero. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there is a real problem of governments here. And um, some intelligent people have said that if it had been Lehman sisters and not Lehman brothers, we wouldn't be in the problems we have today. <laughs> and that is exactly why I tell you we need more women leading and having this aspirational uh, uh, effect to bring other women up. And we need women models also, because if you are a young woman and you have started in business or in politics and you are all alone there, well, at the first problem, you might give up. But if you see there are other women on top of me and I can do as good as they have done, well, you will take courage at that moment and go for it. That is why it is so important to have women leaders and models for our young girls who have talent. And I tell you another story, uh, which was the story why the European Parliament has voted last week with a splashing majority 450 votes yes against 140 votes no for establishing quotas in the boards of listed companies. Why? Well, we in Europe, I think we should be very proud because we have managed that the university graduates in Europe, 60% are females. So well done. The university system works well, we have talent, they go out of the universities, and then what is happening to those? They are lost in translation, somewhere in the middle, because if you look at the government, governing boards of our companies, they are just 16%, not 60, 16% left. Now, what a waste of talent. We cannot afford that. We cannot educate the talent, bring this talent in, and then forget it somewhere. Not only because of economic reasons, it doesn't make sense simply not to utilize the educated talent in our economy, but also for a reason of our societies. Because we have seen everywhere that when you have women taking over together with men, then there are less errors made. The questions of family, the question of equality, the question of the heart in our life is taken serious. Now we meet, we need a lot more heart and a lot less heart policy. We need women on board, we need women in politics, there where they are on board where they are in politics, things go better. So thank you for all those parliamentarians all over the world who help us to go to this direction. And I thank our European Parliament. You have been a model in our European Parliament and you have made a real breakthrough. That's a historical one. It's a historical one. It is going to be the first ever done and others will follow. There need to be models. The European Parliament here has been a model. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you very much, Vivian. And um, what she has not mentioned, she's been for many years a parliamentarian herself. And she once told me the story that for 10, 20, 20 years, 20 years parliamentarian. So um, there is somebody who also crashed the glass ceiling for many other women to follow. And she once told me the story that when she was pregnant, very visibly pregnant, she then gave a speech in the parliament in Luxembourg and she made um, new laws and got the majority for laws and new rules for maternity leave and, and uh, legal con going, coming back to, to work, right? Oh, uh, no, or not a different one? No. We had this, you, you see, uh, we in Europe, most of us have started from the droit Napoleon, Napoleonic law. And Napoleonic law only recognizes a man. Women are worth nothing. So I was so shocked. I was a young parliamentarian, um, pregnant like this, and uh, my child should not get my nationality. And I said, no. So I took my pen, I changed the law, 
And I went to the, uh, I, I went to make a speech, and I said, "Look, the only man around." Huh? I said, "Look, that is the child of whom." <laughs> Mine, yes. <laughs> um, who is the father? You never know. So, <laughs> so the only thing which is secure that is the child belongs to the mother, so that the child does not get the nationality of the mother is completely out of reality. We changed the law before my first son was born. <laughs> <laughs>